I had to make an extra video because it is do or die for stocks right now. We are set for a giant week because not only is the S&P 500 at its low of the entire year, but we have some very important data set to release in a couple days, and this is definitely gonna move the markets. In this video, we're gonna go over one, some top stocks to watch for the next couple days, but we're also going to cover why this week will be so important and everything you need to know to be prepared for the market in the short term and even the next couple weeks because it's about to get important. So we're not going to waste any time. Let's get right into it. So to start off, the most important data that we need to look at is the inflation rate that we that will be released on Thursday, one hour before market open. So 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. The reason this data is so important is because as we can see, over the past couple of years, over the past year, inflation has been skyrocketing and it's also been out of control. And this is not sustainable. If we continue to have 9% inflation in the US economy, that will be devastating and that cannot happen. So the Federal Reserve basically started raising interest rates and you know, rates across the board, everything from mortgages to everything started to rise and that is slowly bringing down inflation but we need to see this inflation rate come down quicker because we're still gonna have a problem if inflation stays this high for too long so basically on thursday one hour before open we're gonna get the current inflation rate the current inflation rate peaked around 9.1 percent in june of 2022 over the past couple months, it has been slowly coming down and we need to see this decrease or else the market will probably not like that. So here's the thing, for Thursday, the market is expecting the inflation rate to come in around 8.1%. If it comes in higher than that, we're gonna have a problem. This is because everyone's expecting inflation to be at around 8.1% year over year and if it comes in higher than that, it shows that we are losing the battle against inflation. If we have inflation too high for too long, that will be horrible, not only for the stock market, but also just for the economy overall. So it's very important that we see this data come down. Now, so keep that in mind. We do not want to see inflation come in higher than 8.1%. This is going to be some of the most important data of the entire week. It would be awesome if we could see the data come in lower than 8.1% because it shows that the fight against inflation is working. That's what we want to see. Now, everyone's probably wondering, all right, the stock market's been brutal this year. The S&P 500 is down around 25% year to date. How does this stand throughout history? So over the past 72 years, we can see an awesome post by Charlie Bellello on Twitter. We can see the, draw, the max drawdowns for the S&P 500. We're right around 25% right now. That is not the biggest drawdown we ever saw, but at the same time, it's a decent sized drawdown. You know, there've been a couple other drawdowns that were larger, like what happened in 2008 and 2009, uh, the dot-com crash and a couple other notable market crashes. But, you know, looking back throughout history, a 25% drawdown is definitely nothing to ignore, right? So I just want to put this into perspective. Like, you know, we're not, like, this is not the steepest drawdown we've ever seen in the market, but at the same time, it's nothing to ignore. So on to my next point. Given this giant drawdown of around 25%, we can see all of the other drawdowns in history, or all of the other drawdowns since 1971, sorry. Um, and we could see them organized in the magnitude. So we could see all the way at the top, we saw a 47% drawdown in 2008 and 2009, right? Brutal. But for the next three months, six months, one year, three years, the stock market boomed up. And we could see this for each major drawdown from over the past 50 years. Basically, every single time we have a drawdown, greater than 21% or so, the stock market has done very, very well in the future, right? That doesn't mean the stock market blasts up right away. You know, there's still a lot of bearish momentum right now. There's still a lot of panic in the market. So it's important to keep that in mind. But looking out further, for the most part, it has always popped back up. It's just a matter of how long it takes. Sometimes we see a recovery of 46% uh, six months later, like in uh, uh, 1974. Other times we only see a recovery of 4% six months later, like in 2002. Sometimes we see a continued sell-off of 18% in 1970, or October of 1973 and uh, June of 1974. You know, it varies quite a bit. 
So the further you go out in terms of time, the higher the chance the stock market will pop back up. So keep that in mind. But looking more at the short-term side of things, the inflation data is not the only data we have to worry about this week, unfortunately. So we do have PPI data coming out tomorrow, one hour before open, which is another sort of inf- another form of inflation data. But the uh, you know the main inflation data will be on Thursday. But another important thing on Wednesday is we have the FOMC minutes report. This is so important because it gives us like an inside look of what the like top members of the Fed are thinking in terms of the economy and what they plan to do with rates going forward. They are extremely influential to the economy and the stock market. So getting a deeper look of what happened in the previous meeting when they increased interest rates is very beneficial to know. So keep that in mind. That comes out at Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And the final things uh, kind of wrap up on Friday. Obviously, we have retail sales data coming out, um, but we do have a Michigan Consumer Sentiment Preliminary Reading coming out as well. Uh, the retail sales, data, retail sales data comes out one hour before open, and the Consumer Sentiment comes out 30 minutes after open, which is 10 a.m. Eastern time. And those events are important, but what I will mainly be looking at on Friday is actually the bank earnings. We can see that earnings season is just starting to kick back up again, and it starts off with the banks. We're seeing powerhouses like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Citigroup, um, Wells Fargo, US Bank Corp, uh, PNC. These are powerhouse bank stocks, and depending on what their earnings look like, that not only will move those bank stocks, but it will also have a big impact on the market overall. You would think that banks would be doing well in a time where interest rates are just exploding and mortgage rates are at you know 7% now, where a year ago they were at like 3%. That's an insane move for like 10 months in mortgage rates. You know, that's crazy. So you would think that the banks would be doing well right now, but of course there's a lot of other factors that go into their earnings besides mortgage rates, but you know, Generally speaking, banks do well during times of uh, high interest rates, so that's good. So seeing how they're doing is important. You know, we want to see them doing good, um, just like any other major company out there. So that's important. Um, bank stocks should be pretty awesome to trade on Friday because, like, let's say they just do horrible, right? Let's say they just sell off. You know, that's awesome for put options, maybe shorting the stock, and if they do good. These bank stocks, a lot of them pay great dividends too. So you could buy the stock and hold for the long term, or you could even day, tra- uh, day trade some calls, or even you know just scalp the stock in and out on Friday. Either way, banks are one industry you're definitely going to want to watch on Friday because they're definitely going to move. But inflation data is the most important thing for the entire week by far, in my opinion. So now on to some of the best stocks for this week. We can see today the stock market not doing bad. You know the S and P 500. Not doing bad today. It's up around 0.6%. You know, we are still right around the low. So overall, it's doing bad. But um, it's just kind of flat heading into these major market events. Out of everything, we do know that we are going to see some big moves. We just don't know if it's going to be the upside or the downside, but that's okay. A cool trick I like to use on TradingView is if you go to their stock heat map and you sort by the performance year to date, you can see what stocks are truly moving this year. And this is where I think most of the opportunity will lie going through the rest of this week. Realistically, there's not going to be too much opportunity trading McDonald's this week, which is, you know, down. 11% 11% this year. It's it's not moving, you know? Like we want to look at stocks that are moving, that are volatile and that will continue to be volatile for the next couple weeks or so. Some of those names include Meta. That's a giant one. Uh, that's down around 61% this year. Crazy. Netflix down around 63.5%. Amazon down around 31%. Um, Qualcomm and the other, like just chip stocks in general, took quite a beating lately. So they will definitely move. Uh, and even like oil stocks as well. Uh, Exxon Mobil's up 62% this year. Chevron's up 35%. Tesla's down around 41%. So stocks like these, I believe, will have the most opportunity, not only for the next couple of weeks, but also just for like day trades over like the next couple of days because they've been all over the place and they've been swinging quite a bit. So keep those ones on your watch list. Either way, I'm very excited for the stock market going into this week. It's like do or die. You know, the stock market's at a main support level. It's at the low of the year. You know, there's important data coming out. 
we need to see inflation start to fall. Um, historically speaking, the best thing to do is slowly buy into stocks. There's a lot of stocks at great levels right now. I love Meta. It's awesome. Citigroup's also pretty good and a couple other ones. But, you know, start buying some long-term stocks. And if you're not into that just yet, be prepared for a ton of volatility for day trades this week because it is going to be crazy. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and check out this video on the screen up here. Uh, basically, I cover why some of these stocks that are posting record revenue are even falling more than stocks that are not even growing. So definitely check out this video. It's pretty interesting.